So, a lot of people are asking me in my comments what they should do. One of my latest videos talking about the oversaturation of the tech market has got people scared. And I'm glad that they're listening because this is important. You need to understand this stuff and it's going to impact your life, not just now, but 10, 20 years from now. There's a cycle to business. And so as a result of that, let's look over it. You should go to this link, Business Cycle on Wikipedia. And if you scroll down, there's the forces of the business cycle. Okay. And so the idea there is that right now, between the accumulation of prosperity, prosperity contains seeds of depression, liquefaction and crisis, and depression breeds prosperity. We are about here. In fact, we're, yeah, around, around this dip here. We are not going back up yet. We are in the free fall. And so that means we are in a liquidation and crisis. I would say that we're about mm, maybe here on the map, if you, if you actually figure that out. Uh, basically, what it comes down to is because of the tax changes and because of everything else that I've made videos about, investment in technology is shifting outside of America. The problem with that is that's going to lead to the destruction of America overall because we're not going to innovate as much and eventually other countries will outpace us simply because we won't be allowed to work on the problems anymore because no one will be hiring. As a result of this, you have to understand that there is there has been a change in the technology industry. If you want to get paid well and your desire to get into technology is motivated by that, then you should stay out of technology. As part of this, as you can see, wages are going to go down. And so... As part of that, if you are already in school and you are already trapped in that cycle, temper your expectations. And if you have the ability to shift your major to something finance related or something math related or maybe engineering related, like a mechanical engineer, do that instead. That is my official advice. You should be moving out of software into hard math or you know hard mechanical engineering and if you can't do that become a plumber or become an electrician if you are electrical minded and you cannot become an electrical engineer for whatever reason electricians are basically electrical engineers but they're the lighter version of it and so because they're doing you know basic 220 volt stuff in houses most of the time uh, there's a lot of people that, you know, make good livings doing that. And they put in new wall plugs, they do whatever. And it's not the same as designing a new circuit board, but it's an honest living. And so the end result is that you need to look at what you want to do with your life and make your own decisions about it. But I would not go into software at this time if I was a noob or a junior who had no experience. And so my official advice to respond to all the people asking me and begging me to make this video is for me to tell you that if you have the opportunity to not go into software, then I would take it because the next five years are going to be hell. And if you are already just graduated or you are at the last part of school and you're about to graduate, then I'm sorry, because you were lied to. And what's going to happen there is I will explain what you can do. Okay. So because we're out here and we're in free fall, opportunities are smaller and there is a lot more people looking for those jobs. A lot of them still have the wrong perception about software being the sort of job where you make six figures a year or more. Those people are dumb and they haven't caught up with reality yet. And what's going to happen is they're going to be an inflationary pressure on wages and everything, and that's gonna help everybody, but their wild expectations will never be met. The end result is that people who are willing to compromise and be more flexible will have a better time. Um, you should also be looking into being more social and connecting with people, because let's face it, 
engineers are not the most social people. I myself have changed my impact on LinkedIn, and I've actually gone out of my way to connect with more people that I wouldn't have otherwise accepted requests for just because I want to be connected to the opportunities that are available. If you are a software development engineer who is brand spanking new, you just graduated, you don't have any experience, I'm sorry, but you're going to be at the bottom of the queue and no one is going to look at you because there's so many people with experience in line in front of you. And so if you really want to leverage your skills and get to a point where in a couple of years you might actually get a job, my recommendation is to go online start a project or join a project that uses this explicitly only this because what's going to happen is the terms of the GPL require it be open source and this version of the GPL requires that even if it's a network service or some other thing, that it still be open source. As a result of that, you can leverage the network effects of the AGPL, the Ethero GPL, or Ethero General Public License, to help with your job search and get your name out there. Now, this does not mean you go around correcting readmes or misspellings or whatever. You actually have to do real work. And if you're against checking in real code that's high quality and actually is backed by unit tests, then just get out of software altogether. Because at that point, you're not wanted. And there are many other people who are going to be able to compete with you who are more than happy to check in high quality code to these projects and not just do this stupid, dumb, open a PR, correct a spelling error, or add a space to a file, and then claim that you're a contributor. Because let's face it, everybody hates the people who do that. If you're doing that, you are toxic. You are part of the problem in open source. Instead, be the solution and actually check in real code. The end result of this is that there's going to be a number of people who think that, you know, this is maybe, maybe this isn't the right way. I disagree. And so you're here, you're watching this. And so you're getting my opinion. And there are people out there who'll just be like, oh, it's just like your opinion, man. And I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm a dude uh, myself. It's fine. But the thing is, is that you have to understand that the GPL and the normal GPL, especially GPL version two, is what the, what the kids these days would call chuggy. And so because it doesn't have any riz, no one's using it. And if you're using GPL version three, you've got more riz. But a GPL, the Afero General Public License, is the most, how can I say this? Because of how it works, it has the best network effects. The problem there is a lot of people check in a Afero General Public License code that's absolutely worthless, or they start projects and then abandon them before they actually have a functional use. If you're going to create something, choose a GPL license that fits you. If you're going to use just a normal GPL, make sure it's version three or greater. And you explicitly say that in the license. Version three or greater should be the actual comment. My preference is that you use a Faro General Public License because at that point, it doesn't matter. People can't servicize it. It cannot be, uh, what do they call it these days? Uh, Source washed, I believe is the term. Open washed. Open washing, that's what it is. And so open washing or open washing, a compound word modeled on whitewash and derived from greenwashing is a term to describe presenting something as open when it is not actually open in the context of open washing. Open refers to transparency, access to information, participation, or knowledge sharing. One of the big problems that open source software has right now is a lot of the open source stuff is being closed off because of either dual licensing requirements or companies that are just flat out trying to proprietorize systems and 
cut off access to source code to projects so that they can be the only ones who have access to it. So when I say use AGPL, what I'm saying is protect yourself from open washing. Protect yourself from those kind of attacks. Start something on GitHub. Do not use, uh, there's other options, but use GitHub. That will be the most advantageous for your career and the community at large right now. But most importantly, you're using Git, so you should have a clone or a backup somewhere else that's public. You have your main development on GitHub, and everything else is just a backup that you force push to or gets pushed to as part of your continuous integration, part of your build, whatever. That is the important thing because you do not want to have a central point of failure. And so the end result is that if you can't do this, if you're not willing to put in the effort and actually write the code that shows people what you're doing, then, well, you know, you can be a mental health technician, go to school for that, be a loan officer, be a mental health therapist. But you know what? If you change and be an electrical engineer, you're going to have the best possible things because this is indeed 2024 Workforce Insights Report. These are the these are the jobs that people actually want are not hiring for. So here's the deal. Psychiatrist, mechanical engineer, construction project manager, electrical engineer. Okay. These are the ones that smart people that typically go into software should be looking at. Okay. Be an accountant. I know it sounds boring, doesn't it? But that's what people are willing to pay for. <clears throat> and data engineer is interesting because that's that's a new thing for AI. But if you're brand new, you don't have the skills for that. And so you're never going to get the experience for that at this point. And so my recommendation is you take this top seven here, psychiatrist, mechanical engineer, construction project manager, electrical engineer, mental health therapist, loan officer, mental health technician. <clears throat> You'll notice a trend. The trades are coming back and people are freaking broken and they need help. Take those trends and use that to go out and help people solve their problems, solve their mental health, do something else besides software. Because for the next few years, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be pretty. And if you're not absolutely in love with software, then get out for your own benefit. It's that simple. People have asked what I think and what I think they should do. And so this is my official response. Go out, start a new project, or join one that's already popular and contribute meaningfully to it in that case. But honestly, somebody else has already gotten all the reputation and credibility from the projects that are already open. If you can contribute to one that's been long running for a while, that will help them out. But you should also start your own project. Go out, find something that isn't possible right now and is not related to AI. I cannot repeat this often enough. Do not do something AI related because let's face it, AI will just end up using whatever you build as a tool on the command line. And so by creating something that is not AI related, you are not only doing something truly technical and different that will make people see that you actually know what you're doing, but it will enable the artificial intelligences that other people have already started building to do more. So go out, find a market, find an industry that you want to disrupt. Maybe there's an entire industry and all they do is work, you know, on a specific widget in a particular way. Make an open source way to do that. Make it AGPL or GPL3+, plus. throw it on GitHub, put your name on it, make sure it has the highest quality code possible. Not by faking the test because everybody can check those tests and see how bad they are. You're not trying to get 100% code coverage by faking the tests. You're trying to make the test meaningful and useful and actually find bugs 
And at that point, once you have a working release or even something that's close to working, people are going to notice. And you can add that to your resume, whether it's on LinkedIn or some other place. You can say, look, I'm the guy who worked on this. And then in, you know, a year after you release it and a recruiter comes to you and says that they're hiring for somebody and they need somebody with 10 years of experience in it, you can say, actually, I invented this and it was released last year. And you might get an interview before they tell you that you're overqualified. And then they hire the person who says they have 15 years doing it. Because that's going to happen, okay? Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it now, is full of posts about the people. Sure, Google uses the software, but they won't hire the guy who actually invented the software. Those things happen. But you will notice that not only will you have contributed to humanity's efforts in a good and positive way, but it might open some doors to you. This is my advice. And it's an advice that I'm actually following myself because I have a number of projects that I'm working on. 